tonight, a gay Kiwi filmmaker presents his first feature film. Hi and welcome. This is Gay Talk Tonight. I'm Andrew Whiteside. My guest is Max Curry. He's a film director from New Zealand who's about to launch his debut film called Everything We Loved. The feature film Everything We Loved shows tomorrow night at the Auckland Film Festival. This is the first feature film for director Max Curry, who worked with me a few years ago on New Zealand's first gay TV show, Queer Nation. Max Curry, really good to see you. Welcome. Thanks, Thanks Andrew. Uh, well, it's a long time ago since you and I worked together on Queer Nation. Many, many years. Yeah, what, what have, you just figured it out. It was 10 years ago that it the was, show it stopped. It was cancelled, yeah. And I think it was almost 15 since yeah. I kind of bounced from the door. Yeah. It's been really about 2001. Yeah. It's going back a while. Long time. Mm. So since then, of course, you've travelled overseas. You've done a, a lot of number of things, such as being in, working for, on Shortland Street, writing mm. a script and so mm. on. But the exciting thing is you're doing your first feature film. So you've written it, yeah. you've directed it. Mm. Why was this project important to you? I've been fascinated for the longest time by why good people do bad things. Um, and I overheard, I was eavesdropping at the gym, and I, I heard a story about a particular crime, um, a very unusual crime in the United States of America. And I was thinking, on the one hand, it's monstrous. On the other hand, I could see a really sympathetic sort of reason why this person might have done that. And straight away, that was a fascinating character. And, and it's, that was the, the genesis for Charlie Shepard, who's the, one of the main characters in Everything We Loved. What's it been like to bring it from the script to actually directing it, and now it's premiered? It's been hard. <laughs> it's been really bloody hard. Um, I think it's well known I lived in my parents' shed for about a year and a half while, while I made the film. And you know, I crashed on a lot of friends' couches. And, you know, there's one or two times where I kind of slept in my car and a house sat and a dog sat and so you know, I really threw myself behind the film and the hardest part of the film isn't so much being on set, I mean that's fantastic, you're actually making it, but the hardest part is kind of around that because when your budget's so low, you know, you make up for that by giving it your life. Mm. And you clearly have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, you know, it's it's been three and a half years of of it of it taking everything, and I think that's the thing with a with a, a low budget film. Um, maybe I can't speak from experience. Maybe it's like having a child in the sense that you give it everything you can, and then it demands more, and you just give and give and give. And and the one thing it teaches you, I guess, is maybe there's there's no limit to how much we can give. Yeah. Now what's interesting about this film is, uh, so it's premiering on Monday, mm. but it's also going to be available online mm. and in aircraft. So that, that's quite a new way of distributing a film. Tell, tell me about that. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, looking at your setup here, you're pretty high tech yourself. And I think, you know, the, the technology now is changing the way that we consume entertainment. And we know that, um, but it hasn't really been done in a big way in New Zealand yet. And we're, we're taking a big risk um, because, you know, we could have, you know, the offer was there to go the traditional theatrical distribution you know, way with this film. Um, but we decided to try and, and kind of you know, pioneer something new. And what that looks like is at the moment the film has its premiere screening in Auckland and Wellington theatres at the same time, the moment that curtain goes up, um, people anywhere in New Zealand uh, with broadband internet will be able to be the first in the country to watch that film online at the same time. And it's not just a stream of a movie, I mean, it's the first time you're seeing it, but you can also tune in for the red carpet pre-show with all the sort of celebs and interviews on the red carpet. And perhaps more importantly, once you've seen the film, you can go online and join in the Q&A with the cast and myself afterwards. Um, and you can you know, fire a question off via Twitter or Facebook and then watch you know, see a Trockenheim answer it from Auckland, which is super exciting. Now, obviously, you were a presenter on Queer Nation, are you, yes. are you in that time? Um, your coming out was fairly, fairly easy, wasn't it? F reasonably easy as, as they go. It was, it was easy. I, th I think, you're looking back, it was also very unusual because shortly after I came out, I was fronting Queer Nation. And, you know, in some ways, I was very lucky because I only had to come out once. And I think for most gay people, you have to come out over and over again your entire life. Any time someone new asks you about your boyfriend or you know, how you know someone or something like that. Um, and you know, 
I feel I was lucky in that sense that um, it was mum, dad, I'm gay, and by the way, I'm going to be on Queer Nation, and you know, that was done. I was out, and um, not only that, but you know, being being young and out, I, I was so lucky. I had this the infrastructure of a TV show to explore all my questions about being gay, anything that sort of I was worried about or I was interested in. You know, I could like tackle it with with a TV camera and explore it, and so. You know, it was this amazing um, training ground um, for, for being gay. And I think, you know, it, it, I'm lucky that it you know, really allowed me to get in touch with my sexuality and understand it in an incredibly supportive context. And that's not true for most people. Yeah. How did you find your relationship with the community, knowing that, it, you know, it, you're very in the community, but you're also reporting on it? How, how did you find that situation? <laughs> I don't think I really understood at the time that I guess the kind of um, political aspect to it. Um, I, I, I don't know, something comes to mind. I remember being in a bar and um, a total stranger coming up and, and sort of uh, talking to me very intimately and, and you know, my boyfriend at the time um, he kind of got into a stout with them. So I, I, I don't know, is that the sort of thing that you mean to well, Maybe just I don't, maybe I, answer the question. Yeah, I, I found it very odd because you're, you're part of a community and yeah. you're also reporting on them. Yeah. And so sometimes, yeah, I sometimes found I'd get odd responses from people in the community. They didn't quite know either how to approach me or, or what, what I meant to them. You know, yeah. it's, a, it's, a very, it's a very odd dynamic when you're very intimately involved in the, in the community that you're reporting on. Everybody knows who you are, mm. but you don't necessarily know everybody. Mm. And they may have expectations on you based on what they've seen on the television. So they're basing their appreciation of what kind of person you are by what they see on television. Mm. Mm. So you know, it, it can alter their perceptions and their reactions to you. And uh, yeah, actually, I think, and maybe this is a difference between you and I, is that I came to Auckland to do Queer Nation. So the moment that I started doing Queer Nation, I was brand new here and I didn't really know anyone anyway. And I think it would have been quite different if I had already been living in Auckland and had sort of a, a community that I was part of and then became known as the gay guy on TV. Um, but you know, for me, that was who I was the moment I arrived. And so that was, I guess, you know, the, the standard for, for all the way through. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it is interesting though, as you were saying before, you know, people, people do remember that and I've been surprised, I was so surprised when the interviews, it sort of comes up as well and I guess, you know, we will always be the two gay guys from Queer Nation. Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, Max Curry, thank you so much. Great to see you again and um, fantastic about the film. All the best. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah.